In the reading today, we have the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. This image helps us to explore the depth of the love that God has for us. Jesus lays down his life for us so that we might truly live. By describing himself in this way, Jesus is describing the close, intimate relationship we are each called to have with the living Lord. Although we are many, we are one flock with one shepherd who knows each one of us personally. Jesus trusts that we will listen to his voice. As we pray this week, let us ask for the grace to truly listen with open and accepting hearts to the needs of our community and the needs of the earth. May we too become loving shepherds to each other and to the environment. Listen for the voice of the Good Shepherd. God, help us to hear the Shepherd's voice and follow him. Refuse to listen to the hireling or wolf. Hirelings don't care and wolves snatch and scatter. Refuse to follow bandits and thieves. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us abundant life. Listen for the voice of the Good Shepherd. Today we turn our hearts and our attention to the Good Shepherd, who loves the sheep and knows each one of us by name.
Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Gospel today comes from the Gospel of St John, the 10th chapter, verses 11 to 18. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because he is a hired hand and he does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. I have received this command from my father. I don't know what encounters you may have had with sheep and shepherds. Growing up as a townie in the 40s and 50s, I had next to none, till I moved to Northwest England as an adult. There I saw sheep in many places, especially on the Pennines and the Lake Mountains. Two memories stand out, which for me brought to life some Bible sayings about sheep. Holidaying in a remote Lancashire farmhouse, I was tidying up when the rest of the family had gone out to the shop. As I made the beds, the usual deep silence was broken by sounds of movement nearby and a jumble of barring and barking and whistling and words. The local farmer was gathering his flock into the small yard enclosed by dry stone walls right beneath my window. I was startled, fascinated and amazed by what I witnessed, as within a short time the yard was filled with sheep. Oh, that was the intention. Unfortunately for the farmer, one or two of the sheep had other plans, and as the last stragglers were being steered in through the gateway, they began scrabbling out over the walls in one or two places where they could find loose stones or get a foothold. As soon as one made his escape, he was quickly followed by another and another. I couldn't help thinking of Isaiah's words, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. Like it or not, the farmer and his dogs simply had to persevere till order was restored. It took patience and care. The other memory from some years later was of finding a solitary sheep stranded beside a mountain stream, close to the little cottage we used to have. The land rose steadily, steeply from the river, and we could do nothing for this sheep except ring the farmer who brought us our milk. Again, it was fascinating to see the skill and determination which Henry showed getting the wayward animal up the steep slope and safely into his truck. The sheep lost any dignity it thought it had with its legs thrust in pairs, but it had to be grateful nonetheless because it was helpless without the aid of the shepherd. This time, I was reminded of Jesus's story of the rescue of the missing 100 sheep and the joy of the faithful and caring shepherd. Today, we've heard about Jesus saying that he is the good shepherd. For those who heard Jesus teaching in person, sheep and their foibles were very familiar. 
so they would easily grasp his meaning. But what about us? I wonder what he might have talked about had he been a teacher in our time. What example of loving sacrificial care might he have used to tell people about himself and the reasons for his coming among them? His core message was about bringing into being God's new kingdom, a new society where love, justice and peace were the hallmarks because people had come into a fresh relationship with God. When people know for themselves the love and forgiveness of God, they have a new motivation for loving and forgiving others. They know that they are part of that one family, one flock, which is God's purpose for all his creation. During the pandemic, we've seen many cases of people working tirelessly and sacrificially in the health and caring professions some even to the point of death, as Jesus was saying about the caring shepherd. Also, we've seen individuals and groups going out of their way to help other people who are struggling, isolated, fearful or grieving. We need to give thanks for all these examples of caring behaviour and also look around us for people and situations where that help is still much needed. Jesus might have said, I am the good doctor, not retreating from the COVID virus. He might have said, I'm the good teacher, working through the pandemic for my vulnerable pupils. Or I'm the good parent, being there for my anxious child. Or going hungry to feed my children when unemployment threatened their welfare. All these strike a chord with us in 2021. If we are disciples, followers of Jesus, we are being called to take him as our role model and to model that caring love of God our Father so that others will see and be drawn to him. Jesus stressed that his work was to gather people into God's one flock, embracing all races, cultures, genders, personalities, and we are called to be his agents in this. As I was thinking and praying about this, I caught sight of something I jotted down very recently while we were working on our parish's vision for our work in the next few years. I should like to share it with you in closing as it resonates so clearly with our thoughts today. I wrote at that time that I felt a fresh sense of connection to this place and its people, feeling something of God's compassion and care for us and a deeper sense of our calling to minister to local needs. I thought of God looking sadly at the plight of so many and I seemed to see them as sheep without a shepherd. Then I imagined God's call to us to be his sheepdogs here for the local people. I find this idea somewhat energizing as we approach our plans for the future. We need to have our eyes and ears wide open to see and understand the varied needs of the members of our community. May God grant us a share of his compassion and the strength to act on it. Amen.
listening. I bet if you're in class at the moment, lots and lots of times your teacher is saying, please listen carefully or use both ears. But I wonder how good you are at listening. I brought with me today a little friend who might actually help us to do some listening. In your class, before you were coming to assembly today, you will have either been asked to sit in a circle or you will have been divided up into two groups, uh, two lines, each having a partner. If you've been asked to sit in a circle, I'm going to ask your teacher in a moment to pause the video for you to do something. I want you to choose one person to sit in the middle of your circle and to hold a rabbit, or it might be something else that has very sharp hearing. And I want everybody else to close their eyes. And then your teacher will tap one person on the head and that person will say hello Mr Rabbit and the person holding the rabbit has got to decide whose voice is saying that. Once you've got very good at that I then want you to try something else. I want you to the person to sit in the middle and this time when somebody taps your head See if you can make up a funny voice, a disguised voice, and see if you can trick the person holding into the rabbit to see if they still know it's you. You might use a very squeaky voice. It's up to you. So you might turn the video off now and come back a bit later. If you're one of the older group, then you will have been asked to sit in two lines, both with and have a partner. Your partner will be holding a whiteboard and a marker pen. If you're the person with a whiteboard and marker pen, in a moment I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And if you're the partner without a marker pen, I want you to look very carefully in a moment. If you are that person, you are going to describe to your friend what they need to draw. But you can't say, oh, please draw a rabbit. You've got to use descriptive words like saying, well, draw a circle in the middle of your board or draw a line. However you do it, have a go. It's going to feel quite chaotic in a moment as you strain to listen for the voice of your partner. Don't get distracted by other voices, although some people will be talking very loud. You need to listen to your friend. So if you are, have a marker pen and a board, close your eyes now. If you're the describing people, just have a look at this. Mm. Now describe to your friend how you might draw it. And your teacher will turn off the video now for you to have five minutes to have a go at that task. Well, welcome back. I wonder which of those exercises you did and if you had some fun about it. For the people with the marker pens, you were asked to draw one of those, a sheep. I wonder if yours looked like that. I wonder indeed. You might share with your friend what yours looked like. In today's Bible story, 
Jesus describes himself as the person who would look after one of those. Yes, the person that looks after a sheep is called a shepherd. And Jesus used that name because he wanted us to know that he cared for us and he listens very carefully to our prayers. I wonder how it is to know that you have a God who is a good shepherd looking out for you, listening to what you have to say. And I wonder if you can think when you say your prayers that you have a shepherd, a good shepherd called God, who is listening to your prayer requests and the things you are concerned or happy about. In a moment, we're going to stop the DVD and you're going to think about how you might listen to God and how you might say a prayer so that God, the Good Shepherd, can listen to you. So now we turn in prayer to Jesus who describes himself as the Good Shepherd. And firstly, let us thank God for all those people Leslie mentioned who have in the last year laid down their lives, if not literally, certainly in terms of their offering of themselves for the sake of others. Perhaps some of us can identify someone whose care and whose love we have benefited from. 
we say thank you to God for them and for their dedication. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we give thanks too for those places where we feel we have belonged and been safe. Even if that belonging or that sense of safety has been a belonging through modern technology, through the internet. We give thanks for our homes, if they have felt like safe places for us or perhaps somewhere else, a school or a home of a friend. We also pray for everyone at this time as we open the gates of our sheepfold and go out again into the wider pastures. We pray for those who are anxious as the gate opens. We pray for those who keep the gates, as Jesus said, he keeps the gate of the sheepfold of the kingdom. And we pray for them as they try to keep us safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And finally, as we rejoice in our own sense of belonging, we also recognize that Jesus has sheep that are not of this flock, of this fold, but who will become part of the one greater flock, which he gathers around himself. We give particular thanks for those who are different from us, but with whom we have shared moments of service, moments of reflection, moments of affection in this time of uncertainty. And as we have journeyed through the past months, We pray that our own sense of belonging may never cause us to make the other who is different from us into an enemy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we ask that we may rejoice in hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd, in knowing the privilege of following his call. Of learning together how to listen to him and how to walk in his way. Amen. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. At this point in our worship, if you wish, you collect some bread and some wine. As we say together the great thanksgiving prayer and we give thanks to God. So how wonderful are the works of your hand, O Lord. And as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. Jesus offered his life for us. And with a love that's stronger even than death, 
he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. On the night before Jesus died, he came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, Jesus again gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often and make me present among you. So, Father, with confidence, we come before you now. <clears throat> Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus. As we eat <clears throat> and drink these holy things in your presence, form each of us into the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at last with all the Celtic saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Leslie now sings, O Lamb of God. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Give us your peace. Jesus, the of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Give us your peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Give us your peace. The disciples heard Jesus pray. And they recorded that prayer for us to share. And so together we say. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we claim to be your sheep. We say that we know your voice because we claim you as our shepherd. When we drink this cup, 
We claim to be your beloved. We say that we will follow you always. Let the words we claim be the life we live. Amen. So the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And so we come now to this time tomorrow. And this time tomorrow, I'm going to be thinking about formal council, or those people who are going to be the new councillors. Don't worry, I'm not intending to stand as a candidate, but um, as part of the Poverty Forum, we have produced a manifesto called the Community Manifesto, and we're asking all those who are standing to be elected as councillors to sign up to this manifesto. There are eight themes. They include ending food poverty. They include housing for everybody. They include addressing climate change. They include public services for all and others. We've heard today about Jesus as a good shepherd, the kind of leader that Jesus was and asks people to follow. Our councillors have the responsibility of leading our county. How will they lead those, these people, us, in this council. And you might want to have a contribution to that. So on our manifesto, we've got some examples of excellent work in each of those themes, but we're also asking for proposals, ideas of how Cornwall can be a fairer and a more just place. We're asking individuals like you, or groups perhaps that you are members of, to send in proposals all the proposals we will gather, and on May the 7th, 
we will put them in a booklet and hand them over to the new councils and say this, these are the proposals people in Cornwall have for making our place more just and more fair. So have a look at our community family manifesto. It's on the website, Cornwall Independent Poverty Forum Community Manifesto. You can find a link from our cluster website. And look at the excellent work that's going on and think, what idea have I got that could make a difference? And then send it in to us. A couple of sentences will be fine. We want no more than 300 words. There's a link on the web page there for you to send that proposal in. You can make a difference. And together, these proposals coming from across Cornwall, addressing all those themes, will be something that our council, hopefully, will look at and act on. Yes, we need good leaders, but those leaders too need ideas to work with, and you can contribute to them. So look at the excellent work, many church work is included in that, but also think hard about the difference that you would want to see and put it in to add to our proposals. Thank you very much. Teach us to follow you, <clears throat> to care for all who are close to us, protect those who are threatened, to welcome those who are rejected, to forgive those who are burdened by guilt, to heal those who are broken and sick, to share with those who have little or nothing, to take the time to really know one another and to love you as you have loved us. Good Shepherd, teach us to follow you, to spread compassion to those who are far away, to speak for those who are voiceless, to defend those who are oppressed and abused, to work for justice for those who are exploited, to make peace for those who suffer violence, to take time to recognise our connectedness and to love as you have loved us. Good Shepherd, teach us to follow you and to be faithful to the calling you gave us, to be shepherds in your name. And now may the angels of God ever watch over you. May the Celtic saints pray for you and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>